hope all of you are doing fine hello good evening good evening himanshi okay i am live why am i not able to see it here so i can see it now good evening good evening good evening everyone uh welcome uh, my name is manoj kumar i am here good evening i am a civil engineering graduate i've cleared ssc cpo ss cd cli cdo going forward there is a free scholarship test free scholarship test and the test is on 6th february that is this sunday please do register for this this is absolutely for free you will have to answer 60 questions in 60 minutes and the test is on 6 feb at 12 pm you get to win from a scholarship pool of 1 crore rupees all you need to do is you need to use my code my code is mj10 you you can use this code and unlock the test and take the test so do tell me yes if you are taking this test so do take this test and get to win amazing scholarships when for what about iconic features you will have priority in doubt solving and also priority in live classes priority in doubt solving will be in the an academy app we ask a doubt feature priority in live classes will be in an academy app we are raise a hand feature so what is ask a doubt by an academy you go to the doubts and solutions feature on your home screen click on ask a doubt and upload your doubt image crop the image and highlight the question choose the subject of the question falls under and here you can have a look at the test series there are few test series which are for free and a few paid tests as well you can attempt all the tests live and recorded now raise a hand feature this is applicable only for plus subscribers so what is raise a hand feature in the middle of a live class if you have any doubt you get the option to raise your hand you can raise your hand and talk to your favorite educator in the middle of a live class and get your doubts resolved online is much better than offline going forward our ssc subscription for 24 months it is 7800 for 12 months it is 6500 for 6 months it is 5400 you can use my code my code is mj10 and you will get 10% off on your subscription and for 2 years it is going to cost 7020 rupees all set let's crack it even before that a report and win feature this is an opportunity for all learners to report any inappropriate content in the video and if you are the first one to report a particular issue you get to claim prize so report any inappropriate content using form in the description box below all set let's crack it so the first question rank of lic in the list of insurance brands globally as per brand finance report what is the rank of lic that is life insurance corporation in the list of insurance brands globally as per brand finance report what is the rank yes you can tell me the answer rank of lic in the list of insurance brands globally as per brand finance report yes i'm waiting for the answer rank of lic in the list of insurance brands globally as per brand finance report india is in the 10th rank yes himanshi 10th rank is the right answer yes as per brand valuation report released by brand finance life insurance corporation uh, has been ranked at the 10th in the list of insurance brands globally uh, ping and insurance of china is at the top ping this is an insurance of china is at the top lic is the only indian insurance company in the top 10 list LIC has a valuation of 8.656 billion that's around 6000 64722 crores as per brand finance the market value of LIC will become 43.40 lakh crore by 2022 and 58.9 lakh crore by 2027 now for the next question which indian athlete has been nominated for laurels world breakthrough of the year 2022 award who is that indian athlete who has been nominated for he has been nominated is not the winner of it yet if he is winner we'll have to go through it again laurels world breakthrough of the year 2022 award who has got it
नीरज चोपड़ा रानी रामपाल पी आर श्रीजेश और पी वी सिंधु लॉरल्स वर्ल्ड ब्रेक थ्रू ऑफ द ईयर ट्वेंटी Yes, tell me the answer quickly. Yes, Neeraj Chopra. Neeraj Chopra is the right answer. Indian Olympic champion Neeraj Chopra. He has been nominated for Laurels World Breakthrough of the Year Award 2022. He is one of the six nominees for this award. The other nominees include Russian tennis star Daniel Medvedev. British tennis player Emma uh, Raducanu, uh, Spanish footballer Pedri, Austri Australian Olympic champion Ariarin Titmus, and Venezuelan athlete Yulimar Rojas. Moving forward to the next question, who has overtaken Bengaluru as the startup capital of India? So, which is that city that has overtaken Bengaluru? Bengaluru is the startup capital of India. It is from Bengaluru that an academy is functioning. Correct? Bengaluru has given birth to a lot of startups. But which is the city which that has overtaken uh, Bengaluru as the startup capital of India? Delhi. Yes, right. Delhi has more number of startups. Uh, so uh, in today's newspaper, I was just going through that Kiran Mazumdar Shah. Who is Kiran Mazumdar Shah? Who is Kiran Mazumdar Shah? Have you heard of Kiran Mazumdar Shah? Biocon. MD and CEO of Biocon. She has told that though Delhi has more number of startups, Bengaluru has given most number of unicorns and the funding that Bengaluru startups have got is no, nowhere close to what Delhi has got. Bengaluru has got a lot of funding and the funding that Bengaluru has got is equivalent to almost the entire funding that the nation has got. So Bengaluru is the startup capital but the number of startups in Delhi might be more but Bengaluru has the highest number of startups. Please remember this. An Academy by Jews, all these startups are from Bengaluru. Yeah, right answer here is Delhi. That's the right answer going forward. Delhi has replaced Bengaluru as the startup capital of India, according to the Economic Survey 2021 22 table by the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman in the Parliament on 31st Jan 2022. The survey says that over 5,000 recognized startups were added in Delhi, while 4,514 startups they were added in Bengaluru. I have told you it is just the number, number of startups are more. But the amount of funding that Bangaluru, Bengaluru startups have got is much, much, much more than what Delhi has got. With 11,308 startups, Maharashtra has the highest number of recognized startups. India had a record number of startups, 44 reach unicorn status. Unicorn are those startups which have an annual revenue of 1 billion dollar rupees. 1 billion. 1 billion dollar. 1 billion dollar. Evaluation of $1 billion or more, they are unicorn startups. Going forward, the lunar year 2022 marks the start of the year of which animal? Lunar year 2022 marks the start of the year of which animal? Lunar year 2022. This marks the start of year of which animal? Which animal is it? Year of ox, year of tiger, year of pig, year of lion. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Lunar year, New Year 2022. Tiger, yes, yes, J. Ash, Ashi. Right answer, year of tiger, that is the right answer. Yes, Himanchi, right answer. Lunar year, lunar new year was observed on Feb 1st, 2022. It is also known as Chinese New Year or the Spring Festival in China. The celebration marks the end of the year of the ox and start of the new year of the year of tiger. The new year is celebrated by nearly 2 billion people in Korea, Singapore, Mongolia, Tibet, Vietnam and Asian communities for more than two weeks. Going forward, who has been appointed as the new Chief of Defense Intelligence Agency? Have you heard of Defense Intelligence Agency? What is Defense Intelligence Agency? DIA is that agency which provides intelligence to Indian military. Intelligence to Indian military. Indian military. 
सो हु इज द न्यू चीफ ऑफ डिफेंस इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसी जी ए वी रेड्डी उर्जित पटेल सादिशा दास और कमल दावर डेफिनेटली उर्जित पटेल हैज नो रोल इन डिफेंस करेक्ट उर्जित पटेल इज रूल्ड आउट न्यू चीफ ऑफ डिफेंस इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसी विज इट इफ टाइगर विच रिप्रेजेंट यस करेक्ट हिमांशी The correct one, the right answer here is GAV Reddy. GAV Reddy is the new chief of Defence Intelligence Agency. Perfect. More on this, Lieutenant General GAV Reddy has been appointed as the new head of the Defence Intelligence Agency. General Reddy would be succeeding Lieutenant General K J S Dillon. Lieutenant General K J S Dillon retired after serving in various strategic positions during his 39-year career in the Indian Army. Director General of Defence Intelligence Agency is the head of organisation and is among the principal advisers on. intelligence to minister of defense and the chief of defense staff so for the next question what is the official mascot of punjab elections we all know elections are going to happen in five states and punjab is one of the states so what is the official mascot of punjab election gajraj ananya ruby gula or shera official mascot of punjab election what is it Yes, I'm waiting for the answer. Official mascot of Punjab election. Right answer here is Shera. Yes, Iman Shi. Right answer. Shera is the right answer. More on this. Chief Electoral Officers Office of Punjab unveiled its election mascot, that is Shera. It aims to increase voter awareness, participation, and promote ethical voting in Punjab Assembly polls. That is scheduled on 28 February 2022. The mascot Shera, depicting a lion, it represents the rich cultural heritage of Punjab. It is promoted under the systematic voters education and electoral participation sweep project of the Election Commission of India. Sweep project was started in 2009 as the flagship program of ECI for voter education. Shera Shera means lion ma. Himanshi, next question: Which ministry has launched federated digital identities? Which is that ministry which has launched federated digital identities? Is it Ministry of Finance, IT Ministry, Ministry of Health, or none of this? Federated digital identities. Which is that ministry which has launched federated digital identities? अरे हु इज इन क्लास अपार्ट फ्रॉम हिमांशी बी लिटिल इंटरेक्टिव यस राइट आंसर इज आई टी मिनिस्ट्री वेल्ड एन एस जैश सो वॉट इज दिस फेडरेटेड डिजिटल आइडेंटिटीज इट एम्स टू इंटरलिंक द मल्टीपल आइडेंटिटीज ऑफ इंडियन सिटीजन फॉर इंस्टेंस डिजिटल आई डीज लाइक आधार पासपोर्ट पैन आर इंटरलिंक एंड स्टोर्ड अंडर ए न्यू यूनिक आई डी दैट इज वॉट इज फेडरेटेड डिजिटल आइडेंटिटीज implemented by miti that is ministry of electronics and information technology we have heard currently how many indian states are listed in unesco tentative list of heritage sites how many sites are listed in unesco tentative list of heritage sites how many sites 41 46 52 or 61 UNESCO standard list of heritage sites how many indian cities are listed in unesco tentative list of heritage sites for the 6 yes for the 6 is the right answer ministry of culture has nominated the sacred ensembles of hoysala located in karnataka for unesco's world heritage list for 2020 2023 the sacred ensembles of hoysala are on unesco tentative list since april 15 2014 the hoysala temples were formally submitted for the nomination by 
permanent representative of India to UNESCO Vishal B. Sharma on Jan 31st, 2022. 46 years, ma, correct. Going forward, what is the amount of GST collected in Jan 2022? The goods and service tax that was collected in Jan 2022, 1.31 lakh crore, 1.19 lakh crore, 1.38 lakh crore or 1.39 lakh crore. Ashif not 52. Good evening Shiva. Good evening. So tell me what is the amount of GST collected in January? Amount of GST collected in January, can you tell me? D. Sorry, there was some network issue. No, no, buffering issue is from my side. It was from my side. So, amount of GST collected in Jan 2022, it is 1.39 lakh crore. That is the right answer. Yes. I hope so. I am clear now. Right answer. Oh, sorry. It's not 1.39. It's 1.38 lakh crore. 1.38 lakh crore. That's the right answer. It's not D, it is B. C. Okay. So the amount of collections in Jan 2022 crossed 1.30 lakh crore from fourth time in the history of GST. The collections in Jan 2022 till 3 p.m. on 31st Jan 2022 was 1,38,394 crore. Jan 2022 collections were 15% higher than the collections in the same month last year. And 25% higher than the GST revenue in Jan 2022. 1.39, yeah, approximately you can say 1.39, 1.39, 1.38, all of them are correct. Okay. But the exact number is 138.394. Going forward, recently which state has got free train connectivity for first time? So Manipur, Nagaland, Mizoram, Rassam. Freight train. That is to transport items. Freight trains. So this has got it for the first time. Yes, you are also correct, Imanchi. So you are Googling. In Google, it is 1.39 crore. Yes, approximately 1.39 crore, Ashif. And uh, Ganesh. Yes, Manipur. Manipur is the right answer. Well done, Sush. That's the right answer. The first freight train reached Rani Gaidalinu station of Manipur on 27th January. Manipur gets freight train connectivity for the first time in last 75 years. Recently, a passenger train from Silchar in Assam reached the Bongai Chungpo railway station in Manipur for the first time. Free train connectivity will boost transportation of goods and promote economic activities in the northeast region. The goods, uh, the government has allocated 7,000 crore for ongoing railway project in the northeast. Moving forward, which state or union territory has approved ex gratia relief of 20,000 per acre to farmers? Which is that state or union territory that is approved 20,000 per acre ex gratia relief to farms? Which state is that? West Bengal, Delhi, Punjab, or Uttar Pradesh? Which state or union territory is it? No, it is not Uttar Pradesh, it is Delhi. Delhi is the right answer. Yes, Himanshi. Delhi is right, yes. The Delhi cabinet approved ex gratia relief of 20,000 per acre to farmers whose land were damaged by rains last year. This September, October 2021, several acres of farmland were damaged due to heavy rain and water logging in the fields. If the damage is found to be 70% or less, the compensation will be 70% of the amount. If the assessed loan is more than 70%, 20,000 uh, per acre will be paid. Moving forward, Sergio Mattarella, very important question. Sergio Mattarella has been elected as the president of which country for second term? Remember the name Sergio Mattarella. He is the president. He is elected as the president for the second term of which country? Brazil, Italy, France or Ukraine? Yes, yes, Imanshi, correct. If the asset loss is more than 70%, 20,000 per acre will be paid. But tell me, Sergio Matruella is elected as the president of which country? 
and very very important Sergio Matrella yes Italy Italy is the right answer yes Italy is the right answer that's true uh, Italian president Sergio Matrella has been elected to a second term in the recent round of elections Matrella was reconfirmed with a broad majority in the voting done by lawmakers and regional representatives the 80 year old jurist academic has been serving as the country's president in 2015 foreign minister luigi di maoi told the re-election was a victory for the country luigi di maoi is also a leading figure of five star movement which is a political party in italy is it buffering for everyone is it buffering for everyone okay bloody sunday is a commemorative event marked by which country bloody sunday usa ireland germany or italy bloody sunday this is an event marked by which country bloody sunday bloody sunday is a commemorative event marked by which country ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है कंटिन्यू हिमांशी एंड शिवा वेटिंग आई वेटिंग फॉर द आंसर यस आयरलैंड आयरलैंड इज द राइट आंसर यस हिमांशी आयरलैंड इज द राइट आंसर नॉर्दर्न आयरलैंड इज मार्किंग फिफ्टी इयर्स ऑफ ब्लडी संडे ऑन विच ब्रिटिश सोल्जर्स फायर्ड अपॉन अ क्राउड ऑफ प्रोटेस्टर्स किलिंग फोर्टीन पीपल आयरिश प्राइम मिनिस्टर Michael Martin also tweeted that the country is paying tribute to the families of the victims. The violence took place during the march organization by Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association. Going forward, Vyam Raksham Rakshamam or We Protect is the theme of which force of India? Vyam Raksham or We Protect is the theme of which armed force of India? ICG that is Indian Coast Guard or ITBP that is Indo Tibetan Border Police or Assam Sentinels or PSA Vayam Rakshamam Vayam Rakshama or V Protect Yes, Himanshi, Indian Coast Guard is right. Indian Coast Guard, this was established in 1977. More on this, Indian Coast Guard is celebrating 46th Raising Day on 1st Feb 2022. And do remember, NDRF, NDRF celebrated its 17th Raising Day. 17th Raising Day on 19th of Jan, NDRF. And... ICG celebrating 46th raising day on 1st Feb 2022. ICG, that is Indian Coast Guard, was formally established on Feb 1st 1977 under the Coast Guard Act 1978 of the Parliament of India. ICG operates under the Ministry of Defence. India has the fourth largest Coast Guard in the world, beginning with just seven surface platforms in 1978. ICG currently comprises of 158 ships, 70 aircrafts in its in inventory. and is likely to achieve the target force levels of 200 surface platforms and 80 aircraft by 2025 going forward which country inaugurated the ij muhyiddin sea lock the world's largest sea lock which is that country which has inaugurated ij muhyiddin sea lock that is the world's largest sea lock remember the largest sea lock is ij muhyiddin sea lock which country has inaugurated this usa netherlands australia or usa The U.S. has been repeated twice. While this is Canada, each movie in sea lock. Netherlands is the right answer. So each movie in sea lock has that is the world's largest sea lock is inaugurated by Netherlands. More on this, Dutch King Willem Alexander officially opened the. Each Muidin sea lock, which is claimed to be largest sea lock in the world, the 500 meter long and 70 meter wide structure replaces a smaller 100 year old 
one at each within a port city connecting the north sea canal to port of amsterdam the structure is deep enough that ships will not have to wait a favorable water level to enter the canal going forward the scheme for enhancement of competitiveness of capital goods sector is associated with which ministry scheme for enhancement of competitiveness of capital goods sector this is associated with which ministry ministry of steel ministry of heavy industries textile or commerce industry scheme for enhancement of competitiveness of capital goods sector Ministry of Commerce and Industry is not the right answer, Ashiv. Right answer here is Ministry of Heavy Industry. That is the right answer. More on this Ministry of Sorry, this is wrong. I apologize. Right answer is Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Ministry of Commerce and Industry notified the second phase of scheme for enhancement of competitiveness in the capital goods sector. The scheme was notified with a financial outlay of 1207 crore. It would cost a budgetary consist of a budgetary support from the government of 975 crore and the rest 232 crore would be come through industry contribution. So please do remember scheme for enhancement of competitiveness of capital goods. This is not by Ministry of Heavy Industry. This is by Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Okay, I stand corrected. Next question: Which state launched the project Sat Bhavana to improve governance? Which is the state which has launched project Sat Bhavana? New Delhi, Madhya Pradesh, Assam or Odisha. Yes, yes, Himanshi. B is right. Project Sadhbhavana to improve governance was launched by which state? Yes, yes. Oh, so sorry, this change in slides. Yes, Assam, Assam is the right answer. Yes, Simanchi, Assam is right. Assam Chief Minister Himant Abhiswasharma launched Project Sadbhavana. It aims to dispose 4 to 5 lakh pending file lying in the state secretariat within a year. A portal will be created where people can inform the pending files along with Sadbhavana. A Swachta Abhiyan in Janata Bhavan will also be launched to promote friendliness. Uh, will also be launched to promote cleanliness in the departments in the secretariat. Remember project Sadbhavana, it aims to dispose 4 to 5 lakh pending files lying in state secretariat within a year. Going forward, when is the world neglected tropical diseases day? Jan 25th, Jan 30th, Feb 1st or Feb 3rd. World neglected tropical diseases day, when is it? Very, 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 very important. There are many tropical diseases which are neglected so when is it absurd yes Imanshi Jan 30 is right answer also Jan 30 is Martyrs Day Martyrs Day apart from that Jan 30 is also Leprosy Day Yeah, up along with this, Jan 30 is also World Neglected Tropical Diseases Day. Yes, Jan 30 is the right answer. World Neglected Tropical Diseases Day is observed on Jan 30th every year to raise awareness on neglected tropical diseases. This year's World Neglected Tropical Day was commemorated under the theme Achieving Health Equity to End the, neg end the Neglect of Poverty Related Diseases. Some of the Entries that is neglected tropical diseases are Chagas disease, Chikungunya, Dengue, Leprosy, Rabies, Trachoma among others. They affect 1 billion people globally. Yes, Simanji, everybody hates diseases. Who doesn't hate diseases? Who loves diseases? Lake Albert is located as a border between which two countries? Lake Albert is a border between which two countries? Uganda and Democratic Republic of Congo, Algeria, Lib Libya, or South Africa, Tanzania, or Uganda and Ethiopia. 
Lake Albert. This is located as a border between which two countries? Lake Albert. Yes, Uganda Democratic Republic of Congo, right answer, that's the right answer. Atmanirbar Bharat Center for Disease. Uh, Atmanirbar Bharat Center for Design is being set up at which place? Atmanirbar Bharat Center for Design is being set up at which place? Agra Fort, Kutub Minar, Red Fort or Fatehpur Sikri. Our Prime Minister Modi's dream project, Atmanirbar Bharat, that is self-sufficient India. Yes, so Uganda Democratic Republic of Congo is right, uh, Himanshi. Now, tell me the answer for this question. Atmanirbar Bharat Center for Disease. For a design. I don't know why I am telling disease, disease, disease. Atmanirbar Bharat Center for Design. Is being set up at which place? Agra Fort, Kutub Minar, Red Fort of Fatehpur Sikh. Atmanirbar Bharat Center for Design. So I am waiting for the answer. Am I live? Please tell me the answer. Okay, right answer here is Red Fort. Red Fort is the right answer. Atmanirbar Bharat Center for Design is being set up at Red Fort. SBI has signed a tripartite memorandum of understanding with Indira Gandhi Center of for Arts and the National uh, Culture Fund of Ministry of Culture for Development of Atmanirbar Bharat Center for Design at L1 Barak Red Fort in Delhi. The main objective of Project ABCD is to highlight and promote celebrate the products that have geographical indicators signed to give a boost to economic value addition to GI products from India. Going forward, what is the processing speed of Param Pravega supercomputer. Processing speed of Param Pravega supercomputer. What is the speed of Param Pravega? 3.6 petaflops, 2.8 petaflops, 2.2 petaflops, or 3.3. Param Pravega supercomputer. What's the processing speed? Param Pravega closing speed. Right answer here is 3.3 petaflops. And how much is one petaflop? One petaflop is equal to a quadrillion, that is 1015 operations per second. And this Param Pravega, this is going to be the most powerful supercomputer in India. And this is being installed at IISC, that is in Bengaluru. So please remember, if you remember me, please remember Param Pravega. That is India's most powerful supercomputer is going to come up in the state or in the city that Manosar is from and is from Bengaluru. And in Bengaluru, what is famous? IISC is famous, Indian Institute of Science. That's famous. Yes. Going forward, who has been appointed as the new chairman of Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India? Very, very important question. New chairman of Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India. Who is it? Navrang Seni, Ravi Mittal, Ritesh Kavdia, or Santosh Shukla. Chairman of Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India. Navrang Seni, Ravi Mittal, Ritesh Kavdia, or Santosh Shukla. Yes, Ravi Mittal. Ravi Mittal is the right answer. Ravi Mittal is the new chairman of Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India. Ravi Mittal, a former secretary department of sports, he has been appointed as the chairman of Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India as per the notification issued by Ministry of Corporate Affairs on Feb 2nd, 2022. Ravi Mittal is a 1986 batch officer from Bihar Kedar. 
he will serve as the chairman of ibbi for a five year term attaining the age of 65 years which ever is earlier going forward which states aravalli biodiversity park has been declared as india's first oecm site aravalli biodiversity park declared as india's oecm park definitely not odisha aravalli does not pass through odisha yeah yes those who are live please answer share this class with your friends yes simanchi thank you so much are you guys live please tell me if you are live do tell me uh, yes i am live i am watching please be interactive yes haryana haryana is the right answer aravalli biodiversity park has been declared as india's first oecm site what is oecm site it is other effective area based conservation measures other effective area based conservation measures remember aravalli biodiversity park this is in gurugram that's in haryana this has been declared as india's first other effective area based conservation measures this was informed by union ministry of environment forest and climate change on the occasion of world wetland day on feb 2nd 2022 uh the international union for conservation of nature provides the gives the oecm tag to those areas that are not protected but support a rich biodiversity uh the tag designates the areas biodiversity hotspot on the international map yes ashif uh, it is not gujarat it is haryana well done shiva haryana is the right answer NASA is planning to retire the International Space Station. International Space Station is taking a retirement by which year? March 2030, Jan 2031, December 2025 or Jan 2026. Retirement of International Space Station which year? March 2030. I think it is 2031. It is Jan 2031. Is what I think. Uh, let me check. It is Jan 2031. Shivanshi. NASA is planning to retire the International Space Station in Jan 2031 and has laid out a detailed transition plan. The space agency is planning to open the ISS, that is the International Space Station, for commercial activities in its final decade for operational life. NASA plans to deorbit the ISS and crash it into the Pacific Ocean in Jan 2031. Before its retirement, NASA is looking forward to a decade of results from research and technology development aboard the space station. Going forward, who has become the third Indian to secure a century in ICC Under-19 World Cup? Third Indian to secure century at ICC Under-19 World Cup. Let me tell you the others. Virat Kohli is one. Virat Kohli. he was uh, the one who secured century in ucc icc under 19 world cup after that it is unak dat unak dat now who is it let me give you a hint he is the captain of under 19 indian cricket team is it yashdul shekh rashid or raj bawa or siddhat yadav who is it third indian to score a century in icc under 19 world cup yes dul yes dul is the right answer well done ashif yes dul is right the indian under 19 skipper skipper means captain yes dul has become the third indian to score a century in icc under 19 world cup cricket world cup after virat kohli and unmukh chand it is not unak dat it is unmukh chand i stay corrected Yes, dual century knock came in India's semi-final match against Australia in ICC Under-19 World Cup 2022. Dual, along with deputy skipper Sheikh Rashid, put up an incredible 204 run partnership for third wicket. This was the second large, biggest partnership of the tournament. Next question: How much amount of line of credit has been extended by Exim Bank to Sri Lanka? How much amount of line of credit has been extended by Exim Bank to Sri Lanka? 
500 million dollars 150 million dollars 210 million dollars or 300 million dollars yeah yeah boys know all about cricket but now even women should learn it shouldn't be a gender based game yeah how much line of credit has been extended by exim bank to sri lanka tell me 500 million 150 million 210 million or 300 million How much line of credit has been extended by Exim Bank to Sri Lanka? 500 million is the right answer, Imanchi. Yes, 500 million dollars is the right answer. Export Import Bank of India, Exim Bank, has extended line of credit of 500 million dollars to Sri Lanka on behalf of the Government of India on Feb 3, 2022. The fund will be used by the island nation for purchase of petroleum products. With the signing of the new line of credit agreement, the total line of credit extended by Exim Bank to Sri Lanka till date has reached 10, taking the total value of line of credits extended to US dollars 2.8 or 2.18 billion. Going forward, who has been reassigned as the additional director of Britannia? Who has resigned, resigned, not reassigned, resigned as the additional director of Britannia? Is it Ujit Patel, GAV Reddy, Sadisha Das, or Santosh Kumar? Resigned as an additional director of Britannia. Who is it who has resigned? Resigned as additional director of Britannia. Who is it? Yes, Ujit Patel, Ujit Patel is the right answer. The former RBI governor, Ujit Patel, he is, it, he is the 24th governor of RBI, has tendered his resignation from the post of non-executive independent director of Britannia Industries Limited with effect from Jan 31st, 2022. The reason behind stepping down is attendant time constraint due to his full-time work assignment at AIB. So do tell me about Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank the headquarters, where is the headquarters and what is the position of Urjit Patel? I have done this in my recent classes starting from Feb 1st, 2022. It must be noted that Mr. Patel has been appointed as Vice President of Beijing based. Everything is here. Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank headquarters in Beijing and Urjit Patel has been appointed as Vice President uh, of Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank for Investment operations in South Asia effective from Feb 1st, 2022. Going forward, how many Indian athletes are participating in Winter Olympics 2022 in Beijing? How many Indian athletes they are participating in Winter Olympics 2022 in Beijing? 10 athletes, 1 athlete, 5 athletes or 3 athletes. So India has told that there will be a diplomatic boycott. Diplomatic boycott that is no diplomats from India will attend the Winter Olympics. So how many Indian athletes are participating in Winter Olympics in 2022 in Beijing? How many Indian athletes are participating in Winter Olympics in 2022 in Beijing? 10 athlete, 1 athlete, 5 athlete or 3 athletes? I guess it is one. One athlete is the right answer. Indian diplomat in Beijing has decided to boycott Winter Olympics 2022 opening and closing ceremony after China chose a soldier who fought in the Galwan Valley clash against Indian troops in 2020 as a task bearer. India's foreign ministry called it regrettable while announcing the diplomat's decision. The ministry said it is indeed regrettable that Chinese side has chosen to politicize an event like Olympics. Next question, which state is likely to host the IPL 2022? Likely to host. It is not declared the host. Likely to host IPL 2022. Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat or New Delhi. Which state will host, likely to host IPL 2022? Which state is it?
right answer here is maharashtra maharashtra is the right answer a uh, bcci president who is bcci president uh, it is sourav ganguly has confirmed recently that ipl 2022 will be held in mumbai and pune in maharashtra the playoffs are likely to be held in ahmedabad but a formal decision is likely to be taken at a later stage bcci president sourav ganguly said that the final decision of the venues for the knockout stages will be taken later next question who has been named as the I a winner of icc spirit of cricket award 2021 winner of icc spirit of cricket award 2021 is it ken williamson joe root quinton de cock or daryl mitchell yes ma correct bcci president is sourav ganguly so tell me who has been named the winner of icc spirit of cricket award very important award spirit of cricket award who has got the spirit of cricket award ken williamson joe root quinton de cock or daryl mitchell Yes, Daryl Mitchell. That is the right answer. New Zealand all-rounder Daryl Mitchell has been named as the winner of ICC Spirit of Cricket Award. Mitchell won the award for his gesture in New Zealand semi-final match against England in 2021 ICC Men's T20 Award World Cup in Abu Dhabi. Daryl Mitchell has become the fourth New Zealand player to win the ICC award after Daniel Vittori, Brendan McCallum, Kane Williamson. He won the award for refusing to take a single in the high-pressure T20 World Cup. semi final on november 10 yes daryl mitchell is right next question currently india in india how many ramsar sites are there how many ramsar sites are presently in india 49 47 51 or 50 very 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 important question how many ramsar sites are in india at present How many Ramsar sites are needed at present? Forty-nine. Yes, correct, correct. Uh, Himanshi, let us have a look at. So basically, there were forty-nine. So there was Thol and Wadwana in Gujarat. Uh, it was forty-three initially. Two in Gujarat were added. Two in Gujarat. There are Thol and Wadwana. After that, two more were added, and they are from Haryana. That is Bindwas and Sultanpur from Haryana. After that, now two more are added. Which are the two? One is Kijadia Wildlife Sanctuary in Gujarat, Kijadia, and one more is Bakira Wildlife Sanctuary in Uttar Pradesh. Kijadia and Bakira. Kijadia is in Gujarat and Bakira is in Uttar Pradesh. So total is going to be forty-nine. So now there are forty-nine Ramsar sites or wetlands in India. Ramsar sites are wetlands of international importance. So what are uh, Ramsar sites? They are wetlands of international importance as per. UNESCO's 1971 Convention on Wetlands held in Ramsar. Moving forward, how much percentage of the total geographical area of India is covered with forest? What is the percentage of total geographical area of India that is covered with forest? Total percentage of the geographical area of India that is covered with forest: 24%, 10%, 16%, or 30%. Percentage of total geographical area of India that is covered with forest. What is the percentage? Yes, uh, Shiva. Twenty-four percent is the right answer. Twenty-four percent is right. Economic survey released the Department of Economic Affairs recently said that India ranks third in the world in terms of forest area gain area. India has added two lakh sixty-six thousand hectares of forest area every year between two thousand ten and twenty. Twenty-four percent of the total geographical area of India is covered with forest. The Indian forests account to two percent of the forests in the world. Moving forward, Gandhi Mandiram Smriti Vanam has been constructed in Sri Kakulam of which state? So, if you know where is Sri Kakulam, you will know the answer. Gandhi Mandiram Smriti Vanam. Gandhi Mandiram Smriti Vanam. Gandhi Mandiram Smriti Vanam has been constructed in Sri Kakulam of which state? Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, or Telangana? Yes, Andhra Pradesh is right. Andhra Pradesh is the right answer. Social activists have built a temple for Mahatma Gandhi and freedom fighters Smriti Vanam at the Municipal Park in Shri Kakulam, Andhra Pradesh. Aim is to 
inculcate patriotism among the youth by remembering the sacrifices of freedom fighters. Statues of freedom fighters and social activists were erected in the park with the help of donors. Arrangements have been made to unveil Gandhi's temple as well as Smriti Vanam on the eve of Gandhiji's death anniversary. Going forward, world's first hydrogen powered flying boat, the jet. This is hydrogen powered flying boat. This is called the jet. This will be launched in New York, Bangkok, Paris or Dubai. World's first hydrogen powered flying boat. It is called the jet. This will be launched. Where will it be launched? New York, Bangkok, Paris or Dubai. Right answer here is Dubai, world's first hydrogen powered flying boat, the jet will be launched in Dubai. Dubai is the right answer. Yes, Himanshi, right? Shiva, wrong. The jet zero emissions announced the launch of world's first hydrogen powered flying boat, the jet in Dubai. That is in UAE. The jet will have its inaugural flight during the COP28, which is scheduled to be held in Dubai. That is UAE in 2023. This announcement comes as a result of agreement between the Swiss startup the Jet Zero Emission, UAE-based Zenith Marine Services and UN-based DWYA to manufacture and operate the jet in Dubai. Going forward, who has been appointed as the director of DRDL, not DRDO, it is DRDL. Who is appointed as the director? Is it P. R. Rijesh, G. A. Srinivas Murthy, Dr. Dashrat Ram or Ritesh Kaudia? Okay, right answer for this is G. S. Srinivas Murthy. G. S. Srinivas Murthy is the right answer. Yes, G. S. Srinivas Murthy is the right answer. G. S. Srinivas Murthy has been appointed as the Director of Defense Research and Development Laboratory of Defense Research and Development Organization in Hyderabad on Feb 1st, 2022. G. S. Srinivas Murthy completed his B in Electronics and Communication Engineering from Andhra Pradesh in 1986 and pursued M.A. in Digital Systems from Osmania University in Hyderabad. Very good, Himanshi. <laughs> yes, very good. India's first ever season style book titled The Class of 2006. Who has written The Class of 2006? Who is the author of Class of 2006? This is India's first ever season style book. Ravi Grover, Akash Kansal, Suhas Patankar or Namas Chandra. Akash Kansal is right. Yes, Shiva. Akash Kansal is the right answer. India's first ever season style book, The Class of 2006, sneak peek into the misadventures of the great Indian engineering life written by Akash Kansal, a management professional. The book, was, the book was virtually launched at one of the biggest book launch ceremonies at IIT Kanpur and Delhi Technologies University. The Class of 2006 consists of 18 different episodes that recall the time spent in college. The book was released on Amazon Kindle by R. Madhavan and an Indian film director, writer and producer. Going forward, which bank launched Suri Shakti Cell in partnership with Tata Power Solar Systems? Surya Shakti Cell. Who has launched this? Surya Shakti Cell along with Tata Power Systems, Power Solar Systems. PNB Bank, HDFC Bank, ICIC Bank or SC, SBA. Surya Shakti Cell. Who has launched this? Surya Shakti Cell. Yes, SBI is the right answer. SBI is right. Right answer is SBI. State Bank of India has collaborated with Tata Power Solar Systems Limited for financing solar power projects in the Ballard Estate in Mumbai. SBI has launched a dedicated centralized processing cell named Suri Shakti Cell with the objective of strengthening the existing financial arrangement for solar power projects. The Suri Shakti Cell will process all the loan applications for solar projects from across India by Tata Power Solar Systems Limited, maximum capacity of 1 megawatt. Going forward, who has been appointed as the new military secretary in the army headquarters? Who is the new military secretary in army headquarters? Is it PJ Kim, PG K Menon or Shakti Gurung, Sampat Kumar or Rajiv Bala? Appointed as the 
न्यू मिलिट्री सेक्रेटरी इन आर्मी हेडक्वार्टर्स PGK Menon is the right Lieutenant General PGK Menon has been appointed as the new military secretary in army headquarters. He was previously serving as commander of lay based fire and fury crop, uh, corps. The military secretary is one of the principal staff officers of the chief of army staff. The role of military secretary is being responsible for promotions and posting of entire officer cadre of the Indian army. He he had replaced Lieutenant General Harinder Singh, who had completed his one-year tenure as the commander of the corps. Going forward, who has become in charge of the Northern Command of the Army? Who is in charge of the Northern Command of the Army? Manoj Pandey, Upendra Dwivedi, Yogesh Kumar Joshi, or Syed Atta Asnai? Who is in charge of Northern Command of the Army? Who is in charge of Northern Command of the Army is the question here. Manoj Pandey is not right, it is Upendra Dwivedi. Upendra Dwivedi is the right answer. Lieutenant General Upendra Dwivedi is an alumnus of Sainik School Reva National Defense Academy and Indian Military Academy. He took over as the General Officer Commanding in Chief of the prestigious Northern Command. Prior to this, he was commissioned into Jammu and Kashmir Rifles Regiment. In a career spanning 37 years, he has served on a wide spectrum of terrain and operational profiles. So that's it for today. I hope you liked the video. Ek like to banta hai. Prime Minister mathe Chief Minister ge yawa ga notification bratta. <laughs> oh, Imanchi want to know how I learn tables, ha? Huh? Uh, like uh, share and uh, subscribe okay as soon as this channel gets 1000 subscribers okay very soon we are going to get that i will tell you how i learn tables clear himanshi prime minister madhe chief minister ge notification very soon barutte aitha karnataka dali 2023 ralli chief minister ge barutte neevu nilbodu bhuvan rao hago Yes, you are welcome, Ashif. You are welcome. Thank you, thank you, Imanshi. Thank you, thank you. Lots of love, lots of love. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll catch up yet again in another video. We'll catch up once again in another video. Until the next video.